Professor Dave and Chegg here. We just learned a bit about chemical equilibria, namely that each will have a forward and a reverse reaction, and that when at equilibrium, the reaction quotient will be equal to the equilibrium constant K. Let us now consider a system that has reached equilibrium, but then experiences some kind of stress that causes the system to shift away from the perfect balance of equilibrium. This would mean that K and Q would no longer be equal. We want to be able to predict how such a system will react, and we can make that prediction using Le Chatelier's principle. Let's see exactly what this principle says. Le Chatelier's principle says that if a system at equilibrium experiences a stress, it will move in a direction so as to relieve that stress and return to equilibrium, re-establishing a Q equals K relationship. It can only do one of two things as the result of experiencing a stress. It can either shift right, producing more products, or it can shift left, producing more reactants. And we need to be able to predict the direction the equilibrium will move in depending on the type of stress that the system is experiencing. Let's examine the types of stress that a system can experience. The first would be a change in concentration of one of the reactants or products. If there is balance, that balance will be thrown off if we add or remove some amount of one of the substances involved. Let's say we add more reactant. The way that the system can restore balance is by shifting right to use up some of the extra reactant. If we remove reactant, the system will shift left to make more of it. Likewise, if we add more product, the system will shift left to get rid of some of it. And if we remove product, the system will shift right to regenerate some of what was lost. The second type of stress involves a change in pressure for the system. If the equilibrium involves gases, a change in pressure could have a substantial effect, provided that the forward and reverse reactions may change the number of gaseous particles in the system. This can be discerned from the balanced chemical equation. Let's say we are looking at the following equilibrium. There are three moles of gaseous particles on the left and two moles on the right. Let's now say that we take the vessel containing this equilibrium and we cause it to compress. As the volume goes down, the pressure will go up, since particles are still moving the same speed as before and will therefore hit the sides more often. As a result, the system will make an effort to relieve some of the additional pressure by shifting the equilibrium towards the side with fewer particles. In this case, that would be the right side. Favoring the side with fewer particles will help relieve some of the additional pressure that has developed. On the other hand, if the vessel expands and the pressure drops, the equilibrium will favor the side with more gaseous particles in an attempt to regain some portion of the lost pressure. Once again, this only has an impact if the number of moles of gaseous reactant and the number of moles of gaseous product are not the same. If they were to be the same, such as with this equilibrium, there would be no ability to alleviate additional pressure one way or another as a result of shifting the equilibrium, so a change in pressure will not cause any shift. The third stress that can be placed on a system is a change in temperature. Unlike concentration and pressure, changing the temperature will actually change the value of the equilibrium constant, but even so, we can qualitatively predict the direction the equilibrium will shift when the temperature increases or decreases. The key is to look at the change in enthalpy of the reaction. Let's examine this reaction here, which has a delta H listed. We can see that delta H is negative, which makes this an exothermic reaction, meaning that heat is released. Since heat is released, we can essentially consider it a product of the reaction. So let's rewrite the equation with the word heat listed as a product. When written this way, we can simply treat heat as another substance involved in the reaction, and a change in temperature will cause the equilibrium to shift just as though we were altering the concentration of a substance. For this one, if the temperature went up, there would be more heat, so the equilibrium would shift left to use some of the excess heat to drive the reverse reaction and balance things out. If the temperature went down, the equilibrium would shift right to regenerate some of the heat lost. Of course, the equilibrium concentrations will also change when the equilibrium shifts, so this must be taken into account, and we can describe the shift in equilibrium in terms of the increasing or decreasing concentrations of these substances as a result of the temperature change. Looking at one more example, the change in enthalpy for the forward reaction is positive, which makes it endothermic, which means heat can be treated as a reactant, since heat must be absorbed for the reaction to occur. If we cool down the system, which way will the equilibrium shift? It must shift left to regain some of the heat lost. 
And with that, we understand the three stresses that can be placed on a system at equilibrium, which are changes in concentration, pressure, and temperature, and the ways in which Le Chatelier's principle dictates that the system must respond. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.